Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text comes from John chapter 10, verse 10, the second portion. Jesus says, I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this has been a strange few weeks for me, to be honest with you all. It is the Easter season, and Pastor Schmidt loves the Easter season, and I hope you do too. I love the hymns. I love the way the church is decorated. I love the upliftness of it all. I love the fact that Easter is about life, and that is such an important part of the Christian belief. And yet, I've had way too many funerals, way too many memorials, Way too many going to visitations for families. And it reminds me that we are not a death cult, but a religion, a faith of life. Every funeral I do, it's hammered over and over again in the liturgy that just as Jesus rose from the dead to live for all eternity, so shall we. It's also hammered in that those who die in faith live with their Lord until that day comes. It's all about life. If you listen to the sermons and to the liturgy. So it is, even in death, an uplifting time, is it not? There was an old man in the Philippines who, and this is where people still work very hard, they have very high poverty, and in the country. And this old man, who by our standards should have retired probably 20 years ago, was walking down the road as he does every day with a huge load that he was taking from the country into the city to sell. And it was massive. And finally one day as a man who's seen him day in and day out, he takes his cart into town that's being uh, pulled by a buffalo. And he says to the old man, hey, I'll give you a ride, hop in, free. You know, it's, and so the old man hops in and they, they go in you know, the back cart and the man's driving his, his uh, buffalo. And then finally after, I don't know, about 10 minutes, he looks back and the old man still has his load on his shoulders. And he looked at him and he goes, you could take it off and leave it here. You're on the ride. How many of you Christians are leaving the burden of death on your shoulders even though Christ rose from the dead? Put it down. Do not worry about it. Do not fear it. The worry is over. Put the burden down. Our Lord has saved you. He has promised that as he's united with you in death, he will also be reunited with, reunited, united with you in the resurrection. You are his sheep after all. He is your shepherd. He will take care of you. And I don't know if you know this a lot, and I, I recommend that the Simmons never get sheep. <laughs> they are not the smartest animals in the animal kingdom. I had a shepherd uh, who had sheep in North Dakota, and I was always shocked by how much they need a shepherd. Need it. Just like we need our Lord. I was at Friday Hal Hensley's funeral. Hal, if you don't know, he was a member of our church for a long time, especially over in Mount Lebanon. His home was actually two doors down from the church. Uh, How had lived a very long life. He had buried his wife years ago and his heart was broken and never mended, ever. And uh, this was at the funeral and I'm gonna tell you a few things that happened there but it's not in chronological order. So please, it happened but not in chronological order. So at this funeral there was a little boy there, Miles, who is Hal's great grandson and I would guess around the age of five. And so uh, the preacher for this funeral was uh, Bishop Hardy, who many of you know. And he looks at the little boy and he says, to, who's sitting on his grand, grandfather's lap, Bishop Hardy says to the boy, your grandfather is with Jesus in heaven and one day you'll be with him too. And the little boy looked at, up at him and goes, who's he talking to? <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> 
But that little boy had a moment here. And why Bishop Hardy spoke to him was because earlier things with that boy happened that needed the conversation to be had. Earlier when I started the service, I actually spoke to the boy because the boy asked his mother a question that he came to church with. He goes, uh, when will I see my grandpa again? And I said, soon. But I don't know when. But he's okay. I, I speak to little children better than Bishop Hardy, but that's neither here nor there. And actually, he's good with kids. So go back a little bit earlier. Children are great theologians. Children speak and see the world as we should. And so little Miles, who's sitting on his father's lap, and he could tell that the room's kind of sad, as it were. And he goes to his dad. Grandpa's with Jesus in heaven. Why are you sad? And I've heard many little children say that, by the way, at funerals. He's not the first. So it's not a special child. It's just that Christian children are reflecting what they have learned, taught, and taken in completely. We should never be sad at a Christian funeral. We should be rejoicing, in fact. Our loved one is not only with Christ soon. We will be too. There's joy in this. Now, I want to be very clear up front. I hate death. I hate everything about it. And though my mother has told me in my entire life, you're not allowed to hate anything, I'm allowed to hate sin, death, and the devil. I figured theologically I got her on that one. <laughs> but death is terrible. And we know that. I'm not trying to take it away from you. It's horrible. But death is a moment and only a moment. And Christ is forever and forever in eternity in life. The little boy walked out of there uh, that day um, Processing the world as a five-year-old processes it. And I don't know how that actually looks. But I do know this. That he was certain that Grandpa Hal was in heaven. And he was. And quite frankly, so was I a little confused. Why the sad face? And the dad said the answer that is the proper answer. We're not sad for Hal. We're just going to miss Grandpa Hal. That's all. And that's okay too. Feel free to mourn the loss of that loved one, but please, please have a lot, of, a lot of joy as well. The lamp of a Christian only goes out because dawn has come. I'll explain myself. If the lamp of our life one day fades out and we end this life, it's not because we're in darkness anymore, but because the dawn of new life has come. And we do not need a lamp anymore, for the Son of God will be our light. We've walked the path. It's so different, isn't it? Maybe you've been in the Christian church too long and you don't know how it is for the rest of the world. They don't talk this way at all. They don't see it this way. They don't see Christ. I'll leave you with one final thought, as it were. There was a man who uh, was a bank uh, branch manager, and they're opening up a new branch for the bank. And so his good friend, who is all excited for him and knows it's a really big deal to open up a bank branch, he uh, sends the, uh, his friend a flowers to, for the day. And the flowers show up, and it was a wreath, and it said, rest in peace. And he was so mad, he called that florist and he said, I cannot believe that you made such a stupid mistake. And he's yelling at him, he goes, well, just think about the upside. And he goes, what's the upside? And he said, well, there's a casket right now with the flowers that says, good luck on your new location. <laughs> <coughs> the location is not that hole or the body. It is with Christ Jesus. And we are happy that we have life today we will have life tomorrow, and when your lamp goes out, you will have life forever. Remember the words of Jesus. He has come to bring life abundantly. I like that word a lot, and hopefully you do too. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus. Amen.